Elon Musk gives us a Starship update. Starlink Gen 2s are now operational. The Falcon workhorse continues to work. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. The next Starship vehicle to attempt a shot at orbit conducted its second test on Wednesday. SpaceX filling her with cryogenic propellant and spinning up its Raptor 2 engines to make sure everything flowed smoothly before a static fire can be conducted. Tweeting, quote, Ship 25 completed a flight-like chill and spin of the Raptor engine pumps, stopping just before engine ignition. As a result of the test, cryogenic liquid oxygen formed a visible cloud beneath the ship. This checked out vital systems in advance of the upcoming static fire. No date yet for when that may be. Quick correction, since this video is releasing late because of the delayed spaces space on Twitter that we'll be covering here in just a moment, road closures now are in place for a possible static fire next week. After multiple scrubs due to scheduling conflicts and lack of Starlink service at a birthday party in Italy, Elon Starship Space's briefing just wrapped up moments ago, but not before he made sure to entertain himself with Twitter's new audio board. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey guys. Unfortunately, the good times didn't continue to roll. The Bloomberg reporter, or whatever he is, Ashley Vance, conducted the Spaces interview and asked such derpy questions, Elon's annoyance became palpable. Are you guys making margaritas back there? I'm at a friend's party. We can postpone <laughs> this if you'd like. And it only got worse when Vance started naming off SpaceX's competition. We don't really think about the competition. Finally, about 25 minutes into the interview, Elon was asked about Starship. There are really a tremendous number of changes uh, between the last uh, Starship flight and this one. So I think the probability of this, this next uh, flight working is, uh, you know, getting to orbit is much higher than the last one. Um, you know, maybe it's like 60%. It, it depends on how well the we do at stage separation. So we, we, we made a uh, sort of late breaking change of, that's really quite significant to the way that stage separation works, which is to use uh, hot, hot staging, what's called hot staging, um, where we light the engines of the uh, upper stage or ship while the, the first stage or booster, booster stage uh, engines are still on. So, so we, we shut down most of the engines on the booster, leaving just a few uh, running. You can, obviously that results in kind of blasting the, the booster, so then you've got to protect the Boost it, the, the, the top of the boost stage from getting incinerated by the uh, upper stage engines. So we we're adding an extension to the booster uh, that has that uh, is, is almost all vent essentially. Uh, so that allows the uh, the upper stage engine plume to uh, go go through the, the the sort of vented extension of the booster and, and not just blow itself up. So to summarize what Elon just said, in order to increase their chances of a successful orbital insertion, SpaceX is going to hot stage Starship from its booster, meaning fire up the second stage engines while the first stage is still burning a few of its own. In order to protect the booster during this event, they're going to elongate the top of the booster so they can add vents for the second stage plume. I kid you not, that's pretty much all we learned from the entire 40 minute interview before Vance started annoying Elon again. To the point, Elon abruptly dropped the call. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is, is there a question there? Yeah, I mean, does, does you know, are you still as dead set focused on Mars as kind of your life's quest, or are you more concerned about other things now? We're trying to get to Mars as fast as possible. What is the status of your new AI company? That is not uh, for the subject. Uh, on Twitter, you know, you said you wanted a technical CEO, but you did not hire a technical CEO. What, what, how did you come to that decision? This is a uh, next question. You have one minute left. You said in your uh, note that we would talk about things beyond space. You tweeted it out. Well, the, literally the title of this is the rise of commercial space. So this is not an open-ended uh, 
you know, as, I, th thanks, Ashley, the call is now terminated. Moving right along, I guess. SpaceX has informed the FCC that the company has initiated communications between its Generation 2 spacecraft in non-geostationary orbit and Earth stations. This comes more than four months after the first Gen 2 satellites were deployed. On Wednesday night, Falcon 9 successfully launched 47 satellites to low Earth orbit from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. It was the fourth mission for the first stage booster, touching down on the autonomous drone ship, of course, still love ya. Then just this morning, another flock of 56 Starlink birds were flown to the fifth orbital shell. The booster, flying for its eighth mission, licked some clouds on its final approach to the awaiting drone ship. There's that confirmation that stage one landing burn has started in preparation for a touchdown on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Keep an eye out for those landing legs that are scheduled to deploy just moments before landing. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. But before all that took place, a different Falcon rocket launched an Indonesian telecommunication satellite, Satria, to geosynchronous transfer orbit from Slick 40, Florida deploying the spacecraft successfully on Sunday evening. The booster flew for its 12th time and landed on a shortfall of gravitas bobbing on the Atlantic Ocean. Epic TV has a new documentary for you to watch, one that was selected for the Manhattan Film Festival called Gender Transformation, The Untold Realities. It's an epic original docudrama examining the complex issues surrounding transgenderism and youth. The film explores the roles played by the education system, medical and pharmaceutical industries, the financial interests behind the transgender movement, and the societal and political mechanisms at work. The docudrama tells the real life stories of several former transgender youth who started the gender transitioning process and their experiences at various stages of the journey through live interviews and reenactments. Experts interviewed in the film reveal the life-altering medical and psychological impacts of the experimental medications used, including the irreversible side effects of puberty blockers, hormone therapies, and surgeries that are not reported by the media. It just debuted this week at the Manhattan Film Festival, but you can watch the first 10 minutes free online now. Or watch the entire docudrama for just $4 and receive a bonus four weeks of full access to Epic TV. Cancel any time. The link is provided below. That's epictim.es slash gender. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Thursday morning, United Launch Alliance lit up its second to last Delta Heavy rocket on Slick 37 at the Cape. Delta Heavy is like SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, except that it costs more than three times as much to launch and none of it is reusable. But other than that, no real difference. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket, carrying NROL 68 for the National Reconnaissance Office. The payload was a classified spy satellite for the National Reconnaissance Office in Rule 68, which I assume deployed successfully and is now being used against the left's political enemies. Well, that's all for today. It was good seeing you. Were you seeing me? Much love goes out to all of you supporting the channel during this era of cancel culture. We really triggered the woke mind virus last week. Unfortunately for the pedo peddlers, I'm also on the pro free speech platform Rumble. Subscribe meow. Have a nominal weekend, and until next Friday, Godspeed.